before I get going, I just want to remind everyone, there's Sarah, before I get going, I just want to remind everyone, um, the Agent Jumpstart March 16th, new format, the hour, 60 minute, uh, great feedback from the last one, really, really powerful feedback. You should pretty much have every one of your agent partners in there. Again, it's comped for you all. Uh, and the feedback was great. They got a ton of takeaways. And those of you that have been through any type of coaching with me, crush groups or one-on-one, -on -one, very easy for you to coach the agents up after because you already know most of the material. So it just gives you a great reason to be on the phone with them, or in some cases in front of them, depending on uh, where you are, whether restaurants are open or a lot of people are vac vaccinated or what, as you go to B2B. So, um, if you need more information on that, let me know. I can text you that link as well, but Josh just put it in. Again, it is comped for you all. Uh, there is, if you click the link, there's lots of information about what the actual hour is about. So you should have enough there to explain to your agents why they wanna be on there. Um, and there's testimonials about it all over the place as well, if you wanna uh, see one of them. So we do have Sarah Wheeler, uh, chief editor of all things at housing wire today sarah we didn't know whether you were out off boiling water or what you were doing down there um, yeah, i was just hanging out in the wrong uh i wasn't in the updated invitation i was hanging out in the other one waiting for you to let me in. no okay no no worries we should have provided some uh we should have provided some drinks for you in there sorry about that no we changed some uh we were messing around on the back end with some rules and things and because of that josh had to create a new uh you know, new link. And what we find, Sarah, is that most people aren't as organized as you and they're clicking the link each week. You know, they're just clicking it. They're not saving it. So to them, it doesn't matter because the link's a link. So uh, Josh, um, I don't even know if you have access. Was anybody, oh, you can't see if anybody else was in that room. Um, Josh, can you actually see if anyone's in there or you can't even see that? No, I think the, the link should be dead. No one should be able to get in. Only Sarah, because she's sneaky. All right. Okay. Oh, she, wanted, she was just in the waiting room part of that. Oh, got it. But could we see if there's anyone in the waiting room, just in case? Or you can't even tell? I don't think so, because the link is dead. Okay. All right. No problem. So uh, we've got Sarah uh, with us from Housing Wire. Uh, Sarah, talk to me last week. Anything interesting going on? Besides, obviously, the Tennessee two-step with interest rates, but anything... Uh, interesting of note for my group here so you know what we had the the pending home sales still down um month over month but up year over year but we did see now um you do have people saying that that the reason that's down is because of the inventory uh mm -hmm. hoping that with the normal you know seasonal sort of home buying activity which you know we've been in a, a crazy mode but they do think that more is going to come online so uh, NAR said that they do think that they're gonna see more inventory come online. You did have though, you had all uh, an extension of forbearance last week. So now people will have, if they started at the beginning could have been in forbearance for 18 months. Um, so that's that's rough on, on servicers who are trying to work these things out. And you know we, we're having a panel at our uh, summit on Thursday and the servicers that I was talking to for that said, you know, is this really the best thing for the market, for the homeowners? Because if it's been 18 months, it's no longer a, a temporary situation that we should be, you know, extending forbearance. They're, they're in a different spot now if, if they've really been on that long. Um, and then also you just you just think that that's gumming up the works with about, you know, 2 million houses or so. Um, that's not going to, you know, it's not going to change the inventory uh, that much because most of those people are going to do workouts, but it is an it is an interesting thing. And also, you know, they extended the for uh, the moratorium on evictions um, and foreclosures. So we're just you know kicking the can down the road a little bit there. Yeah, we uh, my last Friday I had this um, this agent hang for real estate agents, and uh, because of this all this training I've been doing, I, I'm moving really fast. So I created this agent hang for them to just come, and I'm in the room and. If they have questions, they can ask questions. And one of the questions um, uh, an agent from York, Pennsylvania asked uh, had to do with um, REO and foreclosures and houses coming on the market and would that help with inventory issues? And my response was, you know, I don't think it's going to be any different than any other year 
um, you know, the big difference is lenders, servicers do not want to take houses from people. They really have to be pressed to do that. This is not a situation where we used crappy financing an 80, 20, you know, 228 LIDOC loan uh, where, you know, the people are completely upside down in equity. They never should have been in the house in the first place. And to be honest, nobody really cared to take their house. And to be really honest, most people weren't even foreclosed. They weren't even there when they were foreclosed on. They'd already stripped the brass and they were gone. You know, the keys were on the table or underneath the mat. It wasn't even like they were evicted. They were gone. But in the climate we're in right now with COVID, I don't think any servicer wants to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Times. What, you know, the Washington Post, New York Times, because they're booting a bunch of people out of homes. But wait, maybe they're booting someone out of a house with 30 percent equity in it. You know, that's almost borderline equity stripping. You know, so you're right. You use the term work out. And I think that is exactly what servicers are doing. And I guess, Sarah, the question is, based on what you said, it becomes kind of interesting. At what point, you know, do they just say, OK, enough of the forbearance. Let's just get this worked out already. You know, like how much can you pay us? Let's get this thing modified. You know, let's let's do it like that. Well, and what the servicers were saying were it really uh, by extending it, you're you're letting people again just sort of um, not deal with the problem. So so it's just is it going to just be added onto the back of the loan? It's not like that's going away, right? So from their perspective, they felt like it was actually maybe not even good for the borrower at this point. Um, to, to eighteen just... months in forbearance, uh, I, I'm going to say no. You know, unless there's a very unique circumstance. That's exactly would, what they said. Yeah, I would say no. <laughs> um, okay, interesting. What else? Anything else interesting? Oh yeah, lots of lots of things. Um, one of the okay. stories we have up right now—it's not really like a breaking news item, but it's it's looking at the ways that uh, lenders and servicers are are building up their workforce right now or not. And so, in, in fact, uh, this story is really looking at Princeton Mortgage and how they're, instead of scaling up the way they normally do, they're taking a different approach. They're not hiring experienced people. They've kind of broken down the process into very, like, um, you know, the, the workflow is now like one thing. You can do one thing, like an assembly line, sort of like what Rocket and other people do. And so, in that way, they can have people come in and out pretty quickly. It's not experienced people they're paying a lot of money for. Um, I just think it's a really interesting look at like how the workforce is is changing and how people are deciding to do it differently. I think they just looked at it and they were so um, they didn't want to compete uh, for those for that kind of talent and then have to lay them all off. And um, they're they're really looking at a different model. And I think it's interesting. I'm going to put that up there. You know, we, when I, when I build out a big team, uh, you know, with a big producer, say somebody doing, yeah, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 loans a month, and I'm building their team out and we're looking at the different jobs. In fact, I just had this conversation yesterday. Uh, Brian Marks is actually on here right now. He's just, he's got his camera off. He might be busy doing something, but we were having this conversation looking for a team member for his team. And I, I just said to him like, Brian, this person doesn't need to know anything. They just need to double A great attitude and great aptitude. I mean, what they're doing, we could teach anyone how to do. The highly, highly skilled bodies, yes, there are some positions where, you know, there are some positions where, you, you, you yeah, you could teach someone, but it, it takes a little while to grow your own. You know, like structuring a file with a borrower, that's not something you can teach anyone. Pushing buttons, doing order outs, ordering an appraisal, you know, to, you know making sure title is set, I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff that you could teach any, literally anyone that's organized how to do, you know, you well, have to be organized. I think the interesting thing is they're doing a bunch of testing ahead of time to see people's not just aptitude, but their personalities their, um, and their, their start with their marketing department. It's just a really interesting kind of way they're doing. It. And he, you know, uh, the head of Princeton, acknowledges there's risks in this. This is a different way of, of looking at the hiring, but but he's he's sort of tired of that hire fire mentality. So um, I thought that was pretty Well, I mean, there's not, you know, the risk goes way down if you have the right people vetting them, you know? Yeah. Um, and the one of the challenges in our businesses is, is it's, it's hard a lot of times to find right people. I know this very well because I end up doing this for larger companies. I'm actually the one doing the interview, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the body um, and you know we're going deep on those interviews and and you have to go deep 
uh, and you're going to miss a couple. But for the most part, if you do it a certain way, you're going to catch, you know, at least regarding work ethic. And, you know, it's funny, there's a, we have a we do have a generation uh, right now that doesn't have the same work ethic as the other generation. And, you know, it is frustrating uh, for employers when, you know, somebody is like literally out the door at the end of the month at 459. You know, it doesn't even ask, hey, is there anything I need to do when, you know, maybe a CD is not out or, you know, something is going on at the end. So that's interesting. What else this week? Um, we had the FHFA uh, biggest authorization of uh, funds uh, for affordable housing um, because, you know, that's determined on, on what Fannie and Freddie made last year and they made record amounts of profits. So um, they're, they're providing over a billion dollars in affordable housing uh, this year. So that's a pretty big deal. Don't know if that really affects what you guys do, but I think it's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Also got, uh, you know, Logan Motoshami wrote for us, Ex expect purchase application data to be negative in the second half of 2021. But it's really just, a, it, it's just because the data got so screwed up with COVID. You're going to have March and April data that looks like we're having a great year, but that's just because last year we were shut down. Then you're going to have the rest of, you know, the second half of the year look like it's, you know, tanking. It might be negative the rest of the year, but that's, it could be at 15% and still be negative over last year where you had like 26 weeks or 22 weeks of, of, of over 20% growth. So, so I thought that was a really interesting article. I'll put that up because it's like, Hey, the housing headlines, don't let them scare you. Um, it, you know, it doesn't mean that that things are bad. It, it just maybe means they're going back to a more normal uh, level. Let me put yeah, you know, you were talking earlier about uh, that inventory. You know, uh, I would say from my clients, the agents I talk to and loan officers I talk to, there's uh, Ed Bram and I were just talking about this. He's on, he's got his camera on right now. The, you know, the big three is for people not to list, number one, no house to buy, no place to go. Number two, don't want anyone in my house. I don't want to show it. And number three, if you can believe this, we're getting this data from agents, no place to go while my house is being shown in certain markets. And either it's too cold or whatever, and there's literally no place for them to go. Like, where are they going to go hang out with five? You know, with their, they're not going to a friend's house because everyone's locked down. They're not right. going to a park. You know, they're not, where are they going with their kids? And, and as it warms up, as more people get vaccinated, uh, the Johnson & Johnson thing is a really big deal. They tested that up to people up to the age of 55. It's one and done. Johnson & Johnson can make vaccines at the speed of light compared to Moderna and the other two. And it's rolling right now. And I think you're going to see very fast moving uh, action regarding people able to get vaccinated. It's different state by state, county by county. The county I'm in happens to be absolutely horrible. Um, they're one of the worst in the, in the United States. Other places, you can go right into your doctor and boom, you know, just get it. No doctors have it where I am. But um, so I think it's all going to come together. Uh, it's going to come together, interestingly enough, very close to when the Easter Bunny pops his or her little head up, which is when most people list anyway. And I think we are going to rock and roll because the rates are going to be steady. You know, who cares? I don't care if they're three and a quarter. I don't care if they're two and seven eighths. Anything below eight is good as far as I'm concerned. So I don't really care. There are people, the houses are still, the affordability is still through the roof. You know, whether your rate's three and a quarter or two and seven eighths, it's really no no, no, no difference. So um, I think, uh, you know, Sarah, if we're doing these, you know, if you're on here with me, I know, I know uh, Clayton always watches, so he knows what we talked about, but I think we'll have be having a funny conversation in six weeks regarding inventory, even eight yeah. weeks, meaning regarding the fact that, wow, houses are on the market now. You know, well, and I think that it's now. hard to it's hard to determine what is the pent up demand of people who wanted to sell but didn't for all those reasons there wasn't a place to buy the rent. What is that going to look like, right? We, we don't know. I don't think. Well, we knows. know. So it's interesting, Sarah. I know because I'm talking to this slice of the country, pretty much everywhere but Wyoming and Montana. I'm talking to agents and really good loan officers, and I know how many pre approved borrowers they have. I know how many pent oh, up listings there are. It's not reported, but if you, you know, just looked at my notepad, 
I know it's just a slice, but if you took my notepad and extrapolated off it, you could see that it doesn't matter what people report. You know, Clayton and I were laughing about this. We had this conversation almost a year ago. I'm like, Clayton, I'm telling you, this is what's going on. And I remember a month later, he's like, absolutely, you're right. Because that's what's happening at the street level. And people don't, they're not feeling it. You know, how many listing appointments are teed up right now? You know, how many does a good agent have? Like they have 30 people that are all going to list in April and May. That's not reported anywhere. Nobody reports that. You know, you can only know by talking to the agent yourself. Loan officers, you know, we call them BICs, butts and cars. You know, you, you got 100 butts and cars. That's 100 fully docked people. Fully docked. Leeches applied. Blood taken everything in the file all they need is a contract and an appraisal you know a hundred people for one loan officer that's a lot yeah that no, means that's a, it's 60 great of them are going to close in the next month well I, i'm going to take that uh idea and write a story on that we're going to report on it and we're going to call uh, agents in some of these really incredible markets that um that just don't, you know, don't have any inventory and kind of kind of try to tease it out. But I do think it's going to be a, an incredible spring. So anybody who hasn't taken a uh, um, a vacation because of the volume, I mean, when are they going to take a vacation? That's well, I mean, Sarah, first of all, it's kind of hard to go anywhere. You know, it's sure. still kind of hard to go anywhere unless, of course, you're in the great state of Florida where you're not even allowed to wear masks. Then you can go on vacation in your own <laughs> state, you know, or you could just go to Florida and be on vacation uh, if you want. But you know, it's, it's funny. It's all, it's all kind of mishmash together. It's going to be interesting too with travel industry, just to see what people do, because we have this whole thing going on, Sarah, that's so interesting because even though, you know, we're trying to vaccinate at hundred miles an hour, say we got to the point where 60% of the people were vaccinated by, you know, September or something, I don't know, October, whatever, which is, which is the beginning of herd immunity. That's where it starts. Okay. Okay, cool. But does that mean that we can still go to um, South Africa? And can a South African come here? Like, do we have to shut that down? I mean, do we basically have to seal ourselves off and wait for the rest of the world? Because just because we're at one place, you know, from an international travel perspective, that, that negates the whole thing. You know, if you're, if you're trying to leave the country and come back in the country, it's a totally different deal. You know, because well, each country is handling it differently. That's right. And right now you have to, you have to, for international travel, at least I know to like Mexico, the Caribbean, you have to have a test uh, the day before that shows you're negative to get on the plane to come in. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see. What yeah, no, is. it's going to be very interesting. Um, I think we're going to see record amounts of domestic travel. I think people are going to be cruising all over the U.S. this summer. I really yeah. do. And doing whatever they, you know, going wherever they can go to just go somewhere, you know. Um, what else, Sarah? Anything else on your list before I get um, to my thing? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty good. Thanks. So uh, what I wanted to talk to everybody about, we talked a little bit about this last week. You've heard me ranting and raving about refinances, about doc lock schedule, uh, you know, uh, doc lock schedule. Um, you know, I just want to be very, 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 very clear. You should have no loans in your pipeline that are floating unless they are a builder or a short sale. I mean, literally no one should be floating. You should not have anyone out there that you're talking to that thinks they're getting something that is not locked in. You should be doing no mini marketeering whatsoever. This is 2021. You don't get paid any differently based on how you price the loan. You get paid the same thing. It doesn't matter. Get the customer what they want or need, get the concession you need and lock the loan in. I am shocked at how many loan officers got caught with their pants down uh, last week. Um, and, and I was really, you know, I mean, truly shocked because, I, you know, I said to one of them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm shocked that you got caught with this. I thought you understood this. I thought you knew how this worked. You know, I thought that you knew what to say to people. Let's walk through it. The other thing that shocked me, Sarah, and I already knew this, but loan officers that do prequals at the street rate on that day. I, I just, 
it just amazed me how many loan officers are doing that. And I'm just going to put it out there. Sorry if I'm offending anyone on here. It's the dumbest thing you could ever do. Okay. And the reason loan officers do it is because they're scared to have a real conversation with the client. It's a weak referral from an agent. Maybe they don't know that well because they're a tactical uh, transactional LO and they're scared to death to have a real conversation with the borrower. I'm letting you all know right now, if you are not pre qualifying at three quarters in rate over the going rate, you are certifiably insane in this type of market, okay? If the rate is three, you should be running numbers at three and three quarters, okay? You should look your client in the eye and tell them what you're doing. Here's why I'm doing this. I want to make sure that you are pre-qualified for what you want if the market moves. You can tell them what it is today, but no, run their number, run, run their numbers, run their old school PITI, run their gross, run their monthly payment three quarters above. I used to do it one above. And by the way, my agent partners knew exactly what I was doing. And they were part of it. They were telling the people, by the way, Joel's going to run your numbers high. Don't freak out. That's not what you're getting. But we're going to be out there looking for houses. And if the market moves around, the last thing you want is Joel going, sorry, too bad, so sad. You can no longer buy a house because the rates went up three eighths or a half or whatever it is. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure everybody heard this. And if anyone has any questions on this, okay, uh, you can put them in the chat. But if you're thinking, oh, Joel, you can't do that. You don't understand how these borrowers are. I'm telling you right now, sit down, take a breath. You're wrong. I'm 100% right on this one. Okay. When you explain to your agent partners what you're doing, they love you for doing this. They want you to do this. They don't want to take up someone out and show them 72 houses and write 87 offers and do all the stuff they're doing. And then the rate, then the market moves and their people aren't qualified. They hate that. They just lost a massive commission. This is for them, not against them. You need to look these people in the eye and tell them exactly what you're doing. Mr. Borrower, the going rate today is in the low threes. I want to let you know that I'm running your numbers using an interest rate much higher than that to make sure you're fine. You could actually run numbers. You don't even have to tell your client what the number is as long as they're qualified. It doesn't really matter because they don't have a house yet anyway. We're talking about a prequal. You don't know what the taxes are. You don't know what the HOI is. You don't know what the HOA is. You don't know any of that stuff. You can guess but it's all the crap shoot anyway. I just have to, I want to just rant on this because I was shocked at how many LOs had prequals out on the street at like two and three quarters, the 30 year fixed. I was just shocked. And you know, Sarah, the reason this is going on is right now it's 2021. We've got a whole ton of loan officers that came into the business in a downward trending market and all they've seen is rates going down or tiny blips up. No one has ever seen the what I call the big up or a big down. No one's ever seen it. Well, let me take that back. There's plenty of loan officers that have seen it. But there are a huge percentage of loan officers that have never seen it. These are the ones that go, oh, I'll just lock that loan tomorrow. Famous last words, right? You older people like me. I'll just lock that loan tomorrow. <clears throat> Then you're like, uh-oh, the market just moved. You can't lock it. And then you know what you do? Instead of calling and just getting a concession from your company and saying you screwed up, you play the market yourself. You people are insane. That's like a bookie taking bets and not laying them off. If you knew what the market was going to do, you'd be a bond trader. Why would you ever do that? Your job is not to control or quote rates. Your job is to structure loans and get them closed. You don't control the rates. Why would you ever put yourself out there and quote unquote, wait for the market to come back down? That's insanity. And when it runs up and never comes back, you'll remember this if you think I'm crazy now and go, boy, he really wasn't crazy. Okay. 
because I still remember the day and the year when I lost $22,000 in 10 minutes. And by the way, that was in the 90s because I had a third of my pipeline internally floating because I was a baby and was scared to tell people exactly what they were getting because I thought they were going to shop me. So I played the market myself and got destroyed. Okay. And back then, yes, you did earn more depending on how you priced the loan. We don't do that anymore. Thank you, CFPB 2009. Why would you ever mess with that? You can't control it and it's not your job. If you screw up, call your boss, call your secondary and said, I should have locked this loan. This is where I need to be. Take your medicine and get it locked in and forget about it. Your job is to get new loans, not hedge the market. Every time I talk to a loan officer and they tell me, oh, I'm watching the market, it's coming back so I can lock a bunch of people. I just shake my head and say, wow, you really don't understand what your job is because that is not what your job is. And let me tell you, this market takes off on you a little bit and goes up and just doesn't come back for a couple months. You are going to be a customer service nightmare at the company you work at because you will be replying to a lot of emails when you have people basically screaming to your boss, your boss's boss, and your boss's boss, and you'll end up getting written up, and some of you will get fired if you have enough of them. So don't think that these rates are always going to come back to where they were. If you're talking to someone about a refinance and they want to lock in, you tell them, I will lock you in. I need all of your documents by four o'clock today. Here's the list. I need everything and I will lock you in at this. If I don't have your stuff, you are not locked. I'm sending you an email right now telling you you are not locked in. As soon as I get your documents, I will tell you where the market is and I will lock you in, period. If you are pre-calling people for purchase money transactions, I'm telling you I would be three quarters over people. Look them in the eye, tell them what you're doing. And then one by one, tell your agent partners exactly what you're doing. You can use these words in order to serve you better. I want to tell you how I'm pre-qualifying people now. I don't want you out on the street with someone. And then me have to tell you, oops, the market moved and your person doesn't qualify anymore, especially after you've written on three houses and you've written multiple offers and you finally got one, the market moved. And now old Joel is telling you too bad, so sad you can't close. Okay. So again, I want to say this so clearly. It is not your job to control the rates. If the market moves on you and you promise something, go to your company, get whatever you promised and lock them in. Don't wait for the market to come back to you. It's not your job. and It's not your responsibility. If you screw up, admit it and get covered. Okay. Um, those of you that keep lists and watch the market for people, again, that is not your job. I would never be doing that. I'm busy getting new loans, not watching the market for someone. I would tell people when to call me or when to ask questions, and I would just give them updates. Okay. But if you have any loans in your pipeline right now, active pipeline that are not locked, it better be a builder deal or a short sale. Okay. If not, you're certifiably crazy. When you, when we hang up this call right now, you should go through every pre-qual you have sitting out there. Those of you that know the Joel terminology, you should go through your BICs and your PPs and look at the rate you used to do the pre-qual and make sure that your people are still okay. If not, you need to call your agent partners and let them know what's going on. For you to sit and hope and pray that the market is coming back, again, is insanity, okay? It's very, very, very important. Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, and again, I'm sorry if I offended any of you. If you all were doing what I told you not to do, Keith is laughing because we've discussed this before and he knows how I feel about this. Um, and and he's, he's laughing, but I really said it this way on purpose because I want to get through to you, uh, you know, I don't need to tell you, you know, tell you how old I am or whatever. I'm just telling you, I have so been there in this scenario 
and been so burned. I would never want that to happen to any of you. And let me tell you, I've seen the market take off, go up three quarters and not come back for two years. Okay. Which means you got to deal with every single thing you have on your plate and you got to take it or you're going to end up getting fired from your job. When your when your company finds out what you did and they have to honor all that stuff and then lock it in and honor it, they'll write you up and fire you. I can tell you, I definitely would. If you were mini marketeering it, you need to raise your hand right away. So you got refis out there that are undocked, that you're waiting for docs that you didn't lock. You need to call and tell people what the rate is today and tell them you're not locking them until they're docked. And you know if they want to send their documents in now, fine. So you're ready to go. When they, when they have the rate that they want, fine. Purchases, go check every single prequal you have out there and make sure if you qualified them at the going rate at two and five eighths or two and three quarters, uh, I would make sure they can go at three and a half or they can go at wherever three quarters above the rate. If the rate's three and an eighth today, if go three and seven eighths, whatever it is, make sure they're good, okay? And if they're good, you don't even have to tell the client what you're doing just know that they're good so if the agent sells them something you're good to go does anybody have any questions or comments or uh uh you know i just i can just call on keith and you can see the funniest conversation ever sarah if you want but keith and i have known each other for a long time he's just laughing keith i know you agree with me in theory correct absolutely joel no question <laughs> and keith is a guy who who you know has been around long enough that he will mess around a little bit if he gets out on something. And that's why I'm saying we've had this conversation before. Keith and I literally, we've had this literal conversation, haven't we? You and I. Yeah. And, you know, if you're a manager every single morning, like Keith is a producing manager uh, or market leader, but he produces and he manages people. Every single morning, you should check your whole active pipeline at Brem and make sure every LO that rolls to you has nothing live that's floating. And if it is, you should be asking them, what is this? Why is this floating? Like, why is this not locked? So you don't get caught because you guys will and gals will end up uh, holding the back, you know, for the LO. Okay. So everyone, uh, sorry for that long rant. I just felt it was so important. It's painful for me to watch loan officers get in trouble like that. When a lot of you guys, no one's ever really sat and taught you what to do, or you've watched other loan officers in your branch do what I call dumb stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Um, Again, I just want to remind everyone, March 16th, uh, we have our next agent jumpstart. It's an hour long. It was awesome. We got incredible feedback. Um, you can be my guest to put any of your agent partners in there, comped on me. You all have the link. Um, if you all have agent partners that were waiting for Agent Crush, we do have a group starting on Friday, this Friday. That's a paid thing. That's a three month paid thing. Um, and uh, that is beginning uh, on Friday. We do have a couple of slots for that. That's on the site as well. If you have partners that have, were waiting for that, and I know there are people waiting. And we did just schedule our next, our next crush group because the other one sold out and already started for, I want to say, March 19th. So any of you all, I don't know if Carol Cole's on here. There's people that have been asking me when the next group is starting uh, March 19th for the next crush group. Um, everybody, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. We always love having you on uh, from housing wire again, housingwire.com. Any questions uh, you can find Sarah's information there. She does take emails and actually read them. If you have any questions about anything, she did put some uh, links in the chat. If you want to take a look there right now, um, there it is right there. Oh yeah. The event they have coming up is in there. It's in the chat as well on Thursday and everybody be safe out there. I think we're getting close to the end. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I will see and talk to all of you all next Tuesday. Bye-bye.